Hello and welcome to the first module of ECG series. Every medical student finds reading an electrocardiograph, its interpretation and diagnosis quite difficult. Actually, it is not that simple to practice it in wards and clinics as it appears in the books or guideline videos you find on internet. So here are we presenting an easy ECG series to help you see the abnormalities and analyze them to reach the diagnosis. Let us begin our course from the brief introduction into basic principles of ECG and then switch to the diagnosis of pathology with the help of electrocardiograph. As you might already know, ECG stands for electrocardiograph, which is the graphical representation of the electrical changes that occur within the heart during the cardiac cycle. Let me first introduce the PQRST terminology. PQRST signifies the various waveforms of an ECG tracing. P wave represents depolarization and contraction of atria. Normal P wave is generated by SA node situated in right atrium. So first half of P wave is due to right atrial contraction and second half due to left atrial contraction. QRS complex represents depolarization and contraction of ventricles. T wave follows QRS complex which represents repolarization of ventricles. Repolarization of atria is submerged within QRS complex and not recorded in routine ECG. Sometimes there is another positive deflection following T wave which is called U wave. Q wave is the initial downward deflection which may or may not be present. Q wave represents myocardial fibrosis or myocardial scar so it is basically present in old myocardial infarction. R wave is the first upward deflection of QRS complex. S wave is the downward deflection following R wave which represents repolarization of Purkinje fibers. Sometimes we get M pattern where R dash is the second upward deflection following R wave and S dash wave is the downward deflection after R dash wave. Now let us study the various intervals. The time from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of QRS complex is termed as PR interval. It represents conduction time from atrium to ventricles. The time from beginning of Q wave to the end of S wave is called QRS interval which represents time taken by impulse to spread through two ventricles. Time from one set of Q wave to the end of T wave is called QT interval which represents total electrical activity of ventricles. The time between end of QRS complex and one set of T wave is called ST segment which represents early ventricular repolarization. The time between apex of two subsequent R waves is called RR interval which represents rate of ventricular contraction or heart rate. The time interval between one set of one P wave to the one set of another P wave is called PP interval which represents rate of atrial contraction. In normal ECG, PP interval is equal to RR interval. In normal ECG, PR, ST and TP segment are in isoelectric line and amplitude of waves are measured from this line. Now let's study about cardiac cycle grossly before we enter into ECG interpretation. The cardiac cycle consists of four phases, isovolumic contraction, ventricular ejection, isovolumic relaxation and ventricular filling. The total time of each cardiac cycle is 0.8 second where atrial contraction takes 0.1 second and atrial relaxation takes 0.7 seconds. Ventricular contraction takes 0.3 seconds and ventricular relaxation takes 0.5 seconds. The process of depolarization begins at SA node situated in the right atrium. Between 0.06 to 0.08 second, atria get depolarized which is recorded as P wave in ECG. 
wave of depolarization has to reach the ventricles through AV node which delays the impulse by 0.1 second. During this time, there is no significant electrical activity and ECG records it as isoelectric PR segment. As the impulse spreads throughout the ventricles within 0.1 second, the septum gets depolarized first and then right and left ventricles almost simultaneously, but a little earlier on left side. This activity is recorded as QRS complex. Once ventricles are totally depolarized, there's no electrical activity for a brief period. So ECG returns to isoelectric line and records ST segment. Then depolarization of ventricles begin and recorded as T wave. Repolarization is much slower than depolarization and so T wave is broader than QRS complex but it is in same direction as the main wave of QRS complex. Now let's study further about ECG leads. Standard ECG is recorded from 12 leads. Each lead records the electrical potential difference between the positive and negative body surface electrode. Each lead gives view of electrical activity of heart from different direction. Leads 1, 2 and 3 are bipolar leads and record electrical potential difference between two extremities at one time. Lead 1 records electrical potential difference between right arm and left arm. Lead 2 between right arm and left foot. And lead 3 between left foot and left arm. Leads AVR, AVL and AVF are unipolar limb leads where A stands for augmented, V for unipolar, R for right arm, L for left arm and F for left foot. Leads V1, V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6 are unipolar chest leads. Before we move further, we have to understand the situation of chest leads. Lead V1 is situated at right fourth intercostal space just to the right of the sternal border. V2 at the left fourth intercostal space at left sternal border. V4 over the fifth intercostal space at mid clavicular line. Lead V3 between lead V2 and lead V4. Lead V5 and anterior axillary line at same level as lead V4. And lead V6 on mid axillary line at the same level as leads V4 and lead V5. Understanding the anatomy of heart, here we see lead V1 and V2 lie over the right ventricle. Lead V3 and V4 represent interventricular septum. And lead V5 and V6 mainly over left ventricle. So if any changes occur in right ventricle, it is represented mainly by lead V1 and V2 and vice versa, that is, if any changes occurring in left ventricle is represented by lead V5 and lead V6. Moving further, calculation of heart rate. Standard ECG paper runs at the speed of 25 mm per second. So each small square represents 0.04 second and each large square represents 0.2 second. As ECG paper runs 5 large square per second, 300 large square represent 1 minute and 1500 small squares represent 1 minute. So if the rhythm is regular, that is each RR interval is equal then heart rate equals to 300 divided by number of large square in RR interval or heart rate equals to 1500 divided by number of small squares in RR interval. If rhythm is irregular that is each RR interval is different then count R waves in 15 large squares which represent 3 seconds and multiply number by 20 which gives heart rate per minute. 
if rhythm strip is available in your ECG paper, count R waves in 30 large square, which represent 6 seconds and multiply the number by 10, which gives heart rate per minute. So heart rate equals to number of R waves in 15 large square into 20 or number of R waves in 30 large squares into 10. RR interval actually measures the ventricular rate. In total heart block where P waves don't correspond with QRS complexes, atrial rates should be calculated separately by measuring the number of small squares between P waves and divide 1500 by this number. So atrial rate equals to 1500 divided by number of small square between PP interval. Clinically, palpation of pulse is equal to ventricular rate. Atrial rate can be seen only in ECG. Normal heart rate is between 60 to 100. Heart rate below 60 is called bradycardia and heart rate above 100 is called tachycardia. Moving further, on basic ECG, we have two more topics to discuss on. Low voltage ECG. We know it is called low voltage ECG if height of QRS complex or height of R wave in chest lead is less than 10 small square and in limb lead less than 5 small square in normal standardization. Causes of low voltage ECG are pericardial effusion, hypothyroidism, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, etc. Poor progression of R wave. Normally, height of R wave increases progressively from V1 to V6 and height of S wave decreases progressively from lead V1 to V6. Whereas in leads V3 and V4, height of R and S waves are equal approximately. If height of R wave does not increase progressively from lead V1 to lead V6, it is called poor progression of R wave. Causes of poor progression of R wave are chronic obstructive pulmonary disease COPD, old myocardial infarction, ischemic cardiomyopathy, dilated cardiomyopathy, thick chest wall, etc. Axis deviation. Normal cardiac axis is from minus 30 degree to plus 90 degree. To study axis deviation, we usually see leads 1 and 3. Normally, QRS complex is predominantly upward in lead 1 and lead 3. In left axis deviation, prominent R wave is seen in lead 1 and prominent negative deflection either Q wave or S wave in lead 3. In right axis deviation, there is prominent negative deflection in lead 1 and prominent R wave in lead 3. To remember, it is simplified as left leaves and right reaches. That is, imagine lead 1 above and lead 3 below. Left leaves means QRS complexes leave each other in left axis deviation in lead 1 and lead 3. Same way if lead 1 imagine above and lead 3 imagine below right reaches in right axis deviation which means QRS complexes reach each other in right axis deviation. Left axis deviation is usually seen in obese patient WPW syndrome, left ventricular hypertrophy, left bundle branch block, inferior wall infarct. And right axis deviation is usually seen in thin, tall build, chronic lung disease, pulmonary embolism, left posterior hemi block, right ventricular hypertrophy, right bundle branch block, and anterior wall infarct. So our first module of easy ECG series ends here with basic ECG. We will meet you in the next video soon. Thank you.